What's going on YouTube? Today we're gonna to be talking about the Jubilee event. It's coming this Thursday. It's gonna be the most profitable event that you'll ever participate in your entire lives unless ZeniMax makes another more profitable event, but they have not yet. This is going to be absolutely massive. The fundamentals are exceptionally simple. Daily quests, daily quests, daily quests. So this video is gonna be focusing on which daily quests, why those daily quests you want to farm, with some good options for those with DLC, without DLCs, low-level characters, high-level characters, mid-to-max level characters, north-north-west characters, and everyone in between. We got a whole lot to talk about today in this video, and I'm excited for you to be here with me. So let's learn this week how we're all going to become hood rat millionaires. Hear me out, fellas. Before we jump into the video, we are very close to 12,000 subscribers, and you might think to yourself, Jake, is this just another ploy for subscribers? Yes, but hear me out because we are one of the only console players. If you're a console player right now and you're not subscribed, this is like a nationalistic thing. You know, help a console player rise the ranks of the ESO YouTuber tier list. You know, let's pump those numbers up. And if you're a PC player watching this right now, well, it would still be funny to subscribe because, you know, then an Xbox player can say that he's risen the ranks, you know, past those who play on, you know, humdinged equipment. Let's not forget, you know, up until December, we were editing videos on our phones. So we've come a long way. Support the hometown hero. and Let's jump into it. So you probably could tell what the first one is based on where I am. And I know that I like will whack you over the head with this, but Daily Ritz is the easiest, best way to farm daily quests. Why? Because in just this little area alone, there's seven. Seven daily quests that you can complete. And don't worry, I'll give you a general synopsis here in a second on why it's so good. But seven daily quests, that is seven reward boxes. That is seven attempts to get these juiced up modus. Because let's not forget here, every single motif essentially can be found in these boxes. Now granted, there are some motifs that aren't worth as much, but there are some motifs that'll you know let you retire on a small beach you know, off High Isle. You know, and I, you know, I imagine you may want to retire off a beach off a high isle. It's a pretty beautiful island, you know, minus the sea elves and the giant snakes in the water. So it could be a pretty good option for you. Now, the general time to complete your daily writs, even on console for us that don't have add-ons and the ability to press buttons and have the whole game play for us using macros, you know, we can still do it in a couple minutes. Um, so I would suggest farming your daily writs. Now, if you do not know how to get into the routine of doing daily writs, if you're brand new to Daily Ritz, I'm going to link in the, the video description below a video on how to get certified. So basically, the heads and tails is, is any character over at level uh, 6, I believe, is able to become certified to do Daily Ritz. Then once you're certified, you can go to any crafting board. I just picked Somerset because the turn-in area is literally like right over here. So you just wham, bam, wham, bam, pick these up. All the stations are right around you. Do those, turn those in. Now... Why do I suggest doing these on low-level crafted characters? So generally, you have a better chance to get gold materials. You have a better chance to get better items by doing crafting writs on a character with higher crafting level. What is higher crafting level? I'll show you. So generally, that's why people farm it on high-level accounts. But you really don't care if your jewelry crafting is you know higher level. Doesn't matter because you just care about that daily reward box. So that's why Crafting Ritz is the easiest bar to entry for anyone that's doing this event. Requires no DLC, requires really no level except level 6, and you can farm it as many times as you want. You can make multiple accounts. That's actually what a lot of endgame players do. They have multiple accounts who are certified crafters that they just farm these things on. Because the Jubilee, again, is the most profitable event, so it's really good to utilize for your daily Ritz. Plus, you're also going to be getting gold, a ton of experience and crafting experience as well as materials that you're able to utilize in the future because let's not forget too with necrom coming up here soon certainly isn't going to be very bad to have a bunch of extra materials that you're going to be able to use and you're going to be able to make a pretty penny off those also so really it's a win-win for everyone but this is not the only way that you can farm these boxes i have a few others that i will show you Another really good quick option for you guys is to consider your traditional guild dailies. This is going to include things such as the Undaunted, which are these silly billies that I'm sitting next to right now. Why is doing the Undaunted good? Well, while their dailies do take a little bit longer, you're still going to be rolling for Undaunted keys, and you're going to be able to utilize those bad man pajamas. You guys know that I love Undaunted keys. I think they're one of the most valuable currencies in the game. 
and I think that they're generally worth farming. Another quick shout too that you're more than welcome to do is both the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild dailies. You'll be able to pick those up from the same town, uh, which is the Undaunted Enclave is in. Um, overall, I think that they're okay to do. I think that they're great to level up your companion. So if you guys are out here wanting to level up your companion, um, one singular daily is going to level them up one time with the max level of 10. So for example, seven mages guild will go to eight mages guild after you've done one daily quest uh vice versa for undaunted and fighters guild worth doing i think especially during the jubilee event quests don't take a whole whole long time uh, so overall this is a great free way for anyone that doesn't have eso plus to also get some extra boxes and some other good currency shout out to sweet muffin head who messaged me while i was recording this video so this next tip is actually my favorite, and it's a bit loosey-goosey crazy, but I'm actually in Cyrodiil for daily quests. Now, the obvious answer for PvP dailies is to go do your little fruit basket ones, you know, Ooh, go kill 40 players, go scout some bases, Ooh. But honestly, one of you guys suggested this in one of my videos, and it made a lot of sense. As someone who had to farm this for an antiquity, um, it could be pretty easy and fun to go do not only the town so each of these little towns will also give you daily quests there's also little side cities such as the one that i'm currently in right now a uh, coral now what's really nice is, is the quests here are exceptionally straightforward and very fast to complete you're going to be rolling for antiquities you're going to be getting ap and you'll be getting those jubilee event boxes so overall i think it's another great option in addition to doing this too you could also consider doing the imperial city which i think is another great option for you so now we have a weird litmus test so we talked about some daily things that you can do and stick around to the end of the video because i have a final suggestion for your daily quest before thursday here but now we're going to talk about price checking and you're probably wondering why i'm sitting next to an outfit station that probably seems a bit counterintuitive but what's interesting about these is it actually tells you where items drop from for example, you could see that the Worm Cult helmet drops from Anniversary Jubilee gift boxes. This one drops from the final boss in Earthen Root Enclave. This one drops from the Rose Red Petal Bastion dungeon. Why is this a helpful tool, you may be wondering? It's a helpful tool because you yourself are learning right now how rare something is, how horrible it is to farm, and how new it is. Now, this isn't something that you necessarily have to do because there are price checking apps out there. Um, and obviously, I link those in the description below. And I am a huge advocate for price checking apps. I think that they're wonderful. However, price checking apps use data and data can become skewed. You see, when everyone and their mom has a bunch of items, it can really start to devalue those items. So, for example, say you had to farm earthen root enclave the final boss that is a hard dungeon and you pretty much have to do it on veteran to get a motive and really you need to do it on veteran hard mode to be guaranteed to get a motive so you're probably thinking it's going to be a valuable motive well imagine if everyone got a whole well you free wills you know motive they don't really know what they have they're just going to list it up for whatever amount of money seems fair to them in that moment and you might have people just trying to offload, you know, modus that they're getting. They might not know what they have. They're going to start doing that. And you're going to see a plummet in value. And some of this event, I would say, is focused on selling motives 100%. But it's also a really good time for you yourself to start buying motives, especially if you're trying to become a master crafter one day. This is a great opportunity to do so. But you also really want to know what you have. I'm a huge advocate of selling items in ESO. I absolutely love the in-game currency, how it's set up, but really a lot of that comes to you yourself having the knowledge, in my opinion. And I think the number one way to have knowledge is to first understand how in the world would somebody attain this normally. For example, this one comes from Far Grave World Boss Dailies. That could be fairly obscure, um, and this is a pretty good-looking item. So when you're gauging items, not only do you want to have a reference point for sale sellability, so that would be on the price checking apps, how much is selling, and you might think, well, Jake, I play on PlayStation or I play on Xbox EU, we don't have these. You can still see how popular a motive is on those consoles and then gauge based on your pricing if it's still going to be good or not. Well, let's just talk about the litmus test. Does it look good? 
Is it tricky to acquire? And is it more new to the game? You know, is it has it been out since the game was released? Has it been out since the earlier DLC? Or is it something that you could only acquire more recently? That being the last couple years. So these are all the things that you want to be thinking in those brainal compartments. Because a lot of you will be getting motives that are worth millions of gold. And I want you guys to all own and purchase as much stuff as you want during this event. I want all of us to be rich. We're gonna all going to buy some hood rat shit. Uh, funny enough, I had <laughs> I removed that word from the last video because the it kept taking a freaking million years to do the ad read. Like it kept like you know being like, are there any demonetized words in here? You know, it kept like trying to see like it could it put ads on my video for the longest freaking time. So I'm only gonna say that once. I promise you, I'll be a good I'll be a good little chair. But I didn't do it in the first couple minutes, so don't be upset at me. So this is the litmus test for you guys to determine if a motive is good. So think to yourself, how rare is it? Does it look good? Is it new? And is it a bitch and a half to acquire? Those are the things that you're going to want to be considering um, when you're going and you're starting to farm this event and you're getting those items into your inventory. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be wrapping up the old video for you. Now, I did promise you guys an extra tip if you stuck around to the end and this was a longer video. So what is that tip? And that tip is that this event obviously starts on Thursday. So what a lot of people will do is they will farm a bunch of daily quests on all of their characters. And then guess what? They just wait to turn them in. Because if you do that, then you're going to be starting this event off with plenty of juiced up boxes for you to open. Plenty of rolls for those new motifs as well as those old motifs that are going to be dropping plentifully. So overall, that is a great tip for you guys to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As a quick reminder, we are doing the giveaway drawing for this month. The previous giveaway drawing winners are on screen. To enter, very simply, a random subscriber, a random comment. Just don't get it flagged for spam and it will be entered. And then my favorite comment of the month. Three giveaway enter entries every single month. You can enter as many times as you want. And uh, I pull it at the end of the month. So come... May 1st at midnight, we will have three new winners. Each winner wins $20 in a gift card of their so choosing. So that is going to be the old end of it is a quick question of the day. Are you guys excited for this event? Uh, it's my favorite event. You can probably see the excitement seeping off of me even after a long, cold, hard work day. Tried to break my spirits, but it was not able to because we have the Jubilee event here coming. So I'll see you guys in the event, and I will see you later. Bye, guys. Remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. Post-outro Jake here. Thank you for sticking around. This has been an extremely long video. So I just had a quick question on the PvP intro series for those of you who had requested it and just those who might be interested in watching it. Obviously, anyone can weigh in on their opinion. So I'm thinking a three-part series, that being through skills, because uh, I think skills is probably the most essential piece of PvP, even bigger than armor and gear sets, then gear sets slash loadout, and then kind of the fundamental slash gameplay slash you know how to recognize certain things so i'm thinking three parts but i'm open to suggestions on what you guys may think so let me know if you guys have any tweaks or suggestions that you may be thinking and i'll talk to you guys later bye guys